What's up, Frankie family? So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the best Dollar Tree Valentine's Day DIYs ever. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a heart emoji. That really helps the video out. Now let's begin. I have a feeling a lot of you guys are going to love this DIY. Grab some foam board from Dollar Tree. You will be cutting pieces with a razor to create a rectangular box. I have an L bracket that is 24 inches long and 16 inches wide. I just lined it up with my poster board and cut within the bracket. So the front and back pieces of my box are 23 inches long and 15 inches wide. Then the side pieces of my box, I just cut off the extra foam hanging to the side of where I cut the front and back of the box and use that. Don't get rid of the extra foam board, you're gonna use all of it. I traced the heart very lightly on the front of one of my pieces of foam board and then I cut that heart out. I got some red poster board from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use it to create a border for the top of my box at the front and then a little heart for the front of the box. I glue the poster board to my foam board and then I start to glue the box together. I make sure wherever two pieces of foam board meet, I put extra glue where they meet to make this super secure. I found this conversation heart door banner at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut pieces that I'm gonna glue to the inside of my box toward the back. Now I got some conversation hearts from Amazon. You can use the Dollar Tree foam board to create conversation hearts or their craft foam hearts to create them. I, however, did not feel like doing this because this was the very last DIY I had made in this video. I was so over making things at this point. I want to add height amongst the hearts I'm gluing to the inside of my box. To do this, I take the extra foam board I have on hand and cut little pieces that I stack on top of each other, and this will create height amongst each heart. I grabbed the pencil and wrote sweethearts on this. Then I went in with a paint pen to outline it. I was going to use the paint pen to fill it inside, but uh, it, that got annoying real quick. So I just ended up using acrylic paint. So now I grabbed a piece of foam board and I cut off a piece that's just kind of curved. I'm going to go ahead and glue hearts to this. So first I stack the hearts and figure out where I want them to be placed. And then I glue them down. Now here's what's happening. I'm going to hang the box off of my wall upside down. So it looks like hearts are pouring out of it to hang it. I'm using command strips. Name brand command strips are my favorite adhesive strips to put things on the wall. I used four on the back of this and I pushed this against the wall. I ended up moving it from the spot it was in my house just because it didn't make any sense near that shelf. To hang the hearts, you'll do the same thing, just use command strips. And then I ended up gluing some hearts coming out of the bottom of the box. You can always leave that part open if you want to and glue hearts coming out that way. I just didn't know what direction I was taking this in at first. And that's how I made this sweetheart box that is so freaking adorable. One of my favorite DIYs ever, and it's inspired by Turtle Creek Lane. She always decorates her house so nice. And I took this screenshot of some decor she had two years ago, and I've been wanting to make this ever since. For our next DIY, you're gonna need pool noodles from Dollar Tree. If you can find ones in the colors that you already want, I recommend getting them in those colors. What you're gonna do is cut off about two to three inch pieces from your pool noodles. I've been getting a lot of questions about that knife block you see right there. It's from Walmart by Paris Hilton, and I'll link it down below for you guys. It's around $48. Grab a pair of scissors and cut into the top and bottom of your pool noodle pieces in an angle. The angle doesn't matter. You just want to get pieces that look like beads that are on a candy necklace. And this DIY is 1000% inspired by Karina Joy. I will link her down below for you guys. I saw her make this candy necklace and I knew I had to recreate it. And when I saw this, it had my name written all over it. So 1000% inspired by Karina Joy. After all the pool noodles are cut, you can paint the pool noodles that need to be painted. I didn't have to paint the pink ones. That's why I said, if you could find it already, the color you want, that's perfect. I got some DIY wood hearts from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna glue three of them together because I wanted a thicker heart. If you just want to use one of these, you most definitely can. After I have them glued together, I just paint it a light pink color. After everything is dried, get some string and start stringing everything together. I start with the heart and then put the pulled noodles on the side of the heart. Then tie the ends of your string together. I actually left more string on the ends just in case I wanted to hang this like a piece of garland. And that's how I created this candy heart necklace that I am obsessed with. Again, thanks to Karina Joy. If you love fake sweets, you need to check her out. She, her entire house is decorated how my dream house would look. This DIY is so easy. You're gonna need one of these candy jars from Dollar Tree and these scalloped candy containers from Dollar Tree. Place the scallop container upside down and then glue the candy jar on top of that. I recommend getting the larger candy jar if you can find it. 
This is supposed to look like a gumball machine. To give it the details of a gumball machine, I'm using craft foam that I got at Dollar Tree and glitter paper. I'm just cutting out a heart shape and then a little circle and a knob for my gumball machine and gluing that into place. I used a Sharpie to write 25 cents on the circle. Now it's time to fill the inside of your jar with some goodies. So I would do candy, a little teddy bear from Dollar Tree I think is great. Dollar Tree also carries spa day items, toys you can put whatever you want inside of there i just feel like this is a good option i want to decorate underneath the candy jar so i got the gift bow ribbon from dollar tree and i'm just gluing it underneath there i just think it looks really nice doing this and i ended up taking the glitter paper that i purchased and cutting out some pieces that i placed on top of the lid because i felt like making that red made it look more like a gumball machine this is so easy to do and make such a great gift i ended up making two of these and right now dollar tree is carrying these wrapped candy plastic containers they only fit very small things like Hershey's Kisses and Starburst. It has to be small. Anything larger than that, it doesn't fit. As you can see, this is a quick, easy, and inexpensive Valentine's Day gift. I feel like this is something that you can make and also sell. It's a perfect gift to give to somebody, whether you know them well or you don't. I remember the DIY gift ring pops were all the rage last year, so I wanted to do another DIY that has that sweet theme, but isn't repetitive and doing the same thing. And I feel like this achieved that. It's so easy. Before we continue on with the DIYs, I have something very important I want to share with you guys. I keep having people steal my videos and upload them to TikTok, making money off of me. So if you are watching it on a TikTok account that's not Bargain.Bethany or Bargain Bethany DIYs, please report the account. They do not have my permission to upload. All you have to do is click report, press the share button, and then click other, or you can go to the account itself and report it. I do all the hard work of coming up with the DIYs, the DIYing, the voiceover, the editing, the going to Dollar to get supplies, finding a babysitter so that I could upload these videos and somebody could watch my kids as I get all this work done. So I do all the hard work for somebody to literally steal my video and make money off of me. So if you can report the video, it would mean a lot to me. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to leave a comment, like the video, or watch the video in full. That really helps the video do well and hopefully eventually will help me get verified on TikTok so I don't run into this as often. With that being said, let's continue on with the DIY. For our next DIY, you're going to need a basket from Dollar Tree and poster board. These are the smaller baskets Dollar Tree carries, but you can also use the laundry baskets. Lay your basket against your piece of poster board and then trace out the height. You want to figure out what it is and then cut that out. For the out. smaller basket from Dollar Tree, I just needed one piece of poster board that I cut into two pieces. Then I take the pieces I cut and I fold them back and forth as if I was creating a hand fan. Now I'm gluing the poster board to my basket. I'm only gluing it onto the top part of the basket, not along the wire of the basket, just the top. After you have the poster board glued down, I would go in with some more hot glue making sure that it's nice and secured from the top. Now you're gonna need pull noodles. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pull noodle, place it over the basket, and figure out how big of a circle you're gonna need to make so that it can go directly on the basket. So then you're gonna cut off any excess pull noodle that you do not need. Then you're gonna take the ends and tape them together, creating the circle. And you're gonna do this multiple times until you have enough pool noodles that make it look like frosting on a cupcake. So I ended up making four of these circles. The very last one I recommend getting help with because it's kind of hard to push the small circle down. Once you have all your circles, you can then glue them onto each other. And this is the thing, after I did this DIY, I uploaded it to TikTok and a lot of people were telling me not to glue the pool noodles down, instead put something in the basket. So that is an option. I had four circles and then I grabbed a extra piece of pulled noodle I had on hand and I pushed it through the center of the smaller circle and glued that into place. I did this so that I could put a balloon from Dollar Tree inside of there and I didn't want to glue it in there because I want you to be able to remove it so that was the better option. This is supposed to be a jumbo DIY gift you can also use it as decor. This is actually going to be a photo prop eventually for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to place candy on top of this. And to attach the candy, I'm using balloon glue dots. I was using things like Hershey's and Hershey's Kisses. 
and it was wrapped and I didn't want to use hot glue and have the hot glue damage the wrapper and then get to the actual candy so I used balloon glue dots instead I also got some lollipops those I was able to push through if you want to add something like a plushie what you'll do is get a wooden doll from Dollar Tree and zip ties you can also use this method with other items now the reason you'll do this is so that the item you're placing in there stays in place if you tried to use tape to attach a plushie to this it's just gonna fall right off using the zip tie and the wooden dowel will keep it in place while you move this around I ended up getting these hard picks from Dollar Tree I pushed them through the pool noodles to make it look like sprinkles if you want to use full-size candy bars all you have to do is get wooden dowels or bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree and tape them to the back of your candy and then push those skewers through the pool noodles you can always get stickers and cutouts from Dollar Tree to decorate the poster board I love these so much like I said I'm gonna be using these for a photo shoot and I did upload this video first to TikTok. That's where people said, don't glue the pool noodles down so you could put something inside of the basket. I'm trying to upload to TikTok and Instagram first to try to avoid people getting a bunch of views on my videos. Like I said, if you're watching this on a TikTok account that's not Bargain Bethany or Bargain Bethany DIYs, this video is stolen. If it's Bargain Bethany YTV, please report them. During Christmas, I made this nutcracker using Dollar Tree products that went viral on TikTok and Instagram. I knew I had to make a Valentine's Day version of this, so you're going to need three baskets from Dollar Tree. I'm using the smaller baskets this time, but if you use laundry baskets, it's the same thing three baskets now you're going to glue all the baskets together two of the baskets the tops are going to be touching and then two of the baskets the bottoms are going to be touching i'm going to be more detailed with this nutcracker diy because people from tiktok and instagram had a hard time understanding how to make the nutcracker correctly because the videos on there are only a minute long so i could be more detailed here for the legs you'll use foam board from dollar tree you can bend the foam board to make it easier to roll then you'll roll the foam board. You're rolling the longer way, not the shorter way. Once the foam board is rolled, glue the foam board together. If you're having a hard time getting the foam board to not unroll on itself, use zip ties at the top and bottom of the foam board. Now for the base, I'm using this plate that I got from Dollar Tree. I will say this is the one thing I regretted with this DIY. I recommend using a pizza pan. It's much more stable than this plate was. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing my foam board to the plate, but like I said, I would use a pizza pan and then you just do the same thing. Glue your foam board to the pizza pan. After my legs are glued, I put more glue where the foam foam board and plate meat. Now it's time to glue your baskets. All you have to do is put glue on the top of your foam board and then place the baskets right over that. For the body of the nutcracker, I'm using poster board. I'm going to start with a white piece of poster board that can be wedged between the two bottom baskets. I had to cut down the poster board to be wedged there, but if you're using the laundry baskets, your poster board uncut will fit perfectly between your two laundry baskets. Wedge and then wrap your first piece of poster board to keep it in place. You can use tape and then wedge and wrap your second piece of poster board. And again, you can use tape here. This is where I saw people struggle and go wrong. When you're gluing the jacket, the shirt of the nutcracker, you aren't supposed to glue the poster board to the wire of the basket. If you do that, you end up with this triangle shape. It's really hard to do. It doesn't stay put. You're only gluing the poster board where the two laundry baskets meet. That very middle piece where the top of the laundry baskets meet, that's the only area you put glue. So you'll put glue on one side and add your poster board. To make this easier, I recommend grabbing your second piece of poster board, taping it to the piece that's already glued and then continuing to glue that next piece of poster board down for the arms i just rolled some poster board creating a cylinder shape and i glue those arms to the side of my nutcracker didn't do this with my laundry basket nutcracker because it's so tall you can't see this but because this one's smaller i decided to cover the basket i just used a plate here with the laundry basket it's so tall that you can't even see the laundry basket now for the head i'm using a piece of craft foam i got from hobby lobby it's the thicker one there's two different ones, a thinner one in this color and a thicker one. I'm going with the thicker one. The thicker one makes the head more stable. I glue it together to create a cylinder shape and then I glue that on top of my plate. Then it's time to start adding the details to the nutcracker for the hat, the eyes, the eyebrows, all the little details. To do this, I used a mixture of craft foam and poster board. I drew on top of the craft foam and poster board and then cut everything out. I recommend doing this versus painting directly on the poster board because what happens is if you make one little mistake when you're painting, it's really hard to undo it and color match to the poster board versus using craft foam or poster board 
and then you can cut out these pieces if you make a mistake you can just recut something versus again painting you make a mistake and then you have to pretty much color match to get rid of the mistake dollar tree also carries stickers and craft foam hearts that you can use to create details on your nutcracker if you don't want to go too crazy cutting things this was my first time using white foam board to create the nutcracker legs and the white foam board you can really see the imperfections in it so to cover that up i just take white poster board and wrap it and glue it into place around the foam board so that foam board gives this a good base to hold the baskets but the poster board covers up any imperfections and i get this question all the time no you cannot use pole noodles pole noodles cannot hold the weight of the laundry baskets hopefully this tutorial was a bit more detailed for you guys again you're not gluing the poster board to the wire of the basket but where the two top baskets meet. I ended up using spackle to create fake whipped cream and I put that on top of the shoulders to give it that fake whipped cream look. I'll share with you guys how to do that in a moment but this is how I created this Valentine's Day Nutcracker using Dollar Tree products. It is so freaking cute. Now the pink poster board is from Hobby Lobby but Dollar Tree does carry red. I just didn't want to do another red Nutcracker. I love our next DIY. You're gonna get the trinket boxes from Dollar Tree and some spackle. Pour the spackle inside of a container you do not eat out of and then mix in some paint, whatever color you want. You're going to mix it together till you get a creamy consistency. Now you're going to need an icing tip and a piping bag. You're going to put the spackle inside of the piping bag and then you're going to start treating this like it's a cake. You're going to go ahead and squeeze the spackle all over the heart, creating little designs that make it look like frosting or icing, whatever you imagine this cake to be made out of. I got some fake cherries from Amazon. I put the fake cherry inside of the spackle and I continued piping. Now, I ended up doing something new. I always use spackle as my fake icing. This time around, I made some more trinket boxes, but I used simulation glue and I got it from Amazon. I got the pastel pack. There's different ones and this stuff is really interesting. So you don't have to do any mixing. It comes with piping tips and you just put it on top of the little bottles but I will say it's harder to squeeze out but I really like the way that it hardens it has a really nice shine to it it almost looks silicone I've never used this stuff before so it's a great option if you don't want to use spackle and it's about the same price as getting a big thing of spackle at the hardware store it's actually cheaper honestly I want these to be little ring holders so I got foam hair rollers from Dollar Tree and I'm removing the foam off of them and placing that inside of the trinket boxes I did have to cut into some of them to make the top foam piece a little longer this is one of my favorite Valentine's Day DIYs I've ever done it is so stinking cute and I feel like it's something that you could sell and make money off of for the Valentine's Day season or just in general it's that cute and it's perfect for all ages for this DIY, I'm gonna be using the tinsel hearts from Dollar Tree. You can buy these in bulk on their website. However, I am not the biggest fan of ordering from Dollar Tree's website because you have to buy so much. I wanted some pool noodles. I needed to buy 72 pool noodles in order for them to ship to me. What am I gonna do with 72 pool noodles? If I threw them in a pool, it would just be nothing but pool noodles. And on top of that, I would need a pool to do that. But yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of that. You're also gonna need some zip ties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hearts and I'm going to start lining them up to create an arch. So what you want to know is you want to know the height and the width of your arch and lay out your hearts accordingly. So I'm kind of alternating between the purple and the pink hearts and I'm just stacking them like directly on top of each other and then I'll go in with some red hearts eventually. I think at this point is when I'm going to start curving for the top of the arch. I don't have a cameraman so you guys get amazing angles of me. Anyhow. This is when you're gonna take your zip ties and you are going to start zip tying all of your hearts together. So there's just like little wire pieces and that's where you will be able to attach everything. And I recommend using a good amount of t zip ties. So at least three at the bottom to make this like really stiff. Dollar Tree carries this decor piece that's three smaller hearts and you can unattach them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just unattach 
a few of these and use the hearts all around this. When I recorded me making this arch, I had every intention of putting the arch outside. However, since I recorded this, it's been cold outside, negative degree weather, it's blizzarding, so I haven't been able to stick it outside. Instead, I ended up putting it indoors. I just used command hooks to hang this, and I, again, have three different pieces that hang. And if I would have did this outside, I would have just had three different pieces to break down and put together. This was one of the more expensive DIYs that I made. It was 22 items, so that came out to $27.50 plus taxes. However, to buy this, it would cost more money, and to have it made would cost a lot more money, even to rent it. So to DIY it myself, I'm pretty proud of it, and it ended up looking really cute indoors. I am going to attempt to do this outside. If I do that, I'll upload it to TikTok. For this DIY, you're going to need a lawn laundry basket and some party streamers. You can also use ribbon, but party streamers, you get a lot more bang for your buck. You're gonna take your streamers and weave it in and out of the laundry basket till you get all around. You can do multiple colors, you can do all the same type of color. It's completely up to you. On the back part where the streamer ends meet, you can just tape those into place. You're gonna need a pool noodle and some zip ties from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take my zip tie and I'm gonna start tying it into the laundry basket. And once I have it closed off, I'm then gonna slide my pool noodle through that and zip tie it into place. Then I'm gonna bend the pool noodle, bring it around, and zip tie the other end to the laundry basket. I ended up purchasing some garland from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna zip tie the garland to the pool noodle and then wrap it around. I ended up using two garlands total. You don't have to do this. I just think it looks prettier. The garland and pretty much everything I'm sharing from here on out is optional. I decided to zip tie one of the tinsel hearts from Dollar Tree to the top of my handle. Inside of my basket, I placed in one of these throw pillows from Dollar Tree and then a teddy bear. The teddy bear is from Walmart. I'll link it down below for you guys, but Dollar Tree recently got in $5 teddy bears. I think the one from Walmart is cuter, but go with whatever you want. Then I got a balloon from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut it down and push it into the pool noodle. I got some fake roses and candy from Dollar Tree that I'm placing inside of the basket as well. That's how I made this jumbo basket for Valentine's Day. This is a perfect gift idea that's really easy to do and if you have young kids you can take pictures of them inside of the basket and it looks so cute. For this next DIY you're gonna need candy. So I recommend having three of the same boxes for candy however somebody in my house ate my prop so I'm gonna have to use a different box though like I said I do recommend having three of the same. So what you're gonna do is you are gonna attach three of your boxes just kind of creating a triangle. I'm usually not the biggest fan of using hot glue when I'm doing a DIY with actual food but because these are in boxes it's okay the hot glue is not gonna touch the candy. After I've done that I'm gonna glue my candy on top of a paper plate now you can use whatever you have on hand a paper plate cardboard poster board you just need something at the bottom so whatever you stick inside of here doesn't fall out i used a paper plate and then i cut off any paper plate that i don't need now you're gonna need some wooden dowels or bamboo skewers from dollar tree you can even use popsicle sticks you're also gonna need tape you're gonna be placing whatever you're using on the back of candy and then use tape to tape it into place so you can make your candy basically go off of sticks so they pop out of the little box of candy we made got a balloon from Dollar Tree it was a little too tall so I went ahead and cut the bottom down a little bit and taped that into place I start to place the candy that is on the sticks inside of the box I did mess with the sticks a little bit by cutting some of it off just so I would have different variations of height I didn't want all the candy to be the same height then I got this ribbon from Dollar Tree it's three for a dollar and 25 cents so you can split it amongst multiple of these projects so the first box I only needed 10 items costing me $12.50. And then the box that's on the right, I was able to use the leftover Twix and Reese's I had from the first box and some of the leftover ribbon. So I only needed five more items so these two boxes total cost me $18.75. Just one of these was $19.98 at Walmart. For this next project, get yourself a cupcake pan from Dollar Tree and some of their baking cups. Place the baking cups inside of the cupcake pan. Then you're gonna get some socks from Dollar Tree, preferably the Valentine's Day socks, and you're gonna roll them to fit inside of each little cup. The best way of doing this is by folding the socks in half and then rolling them really tightly inward. And once you've done that, you just 
just put inside of the baking cup and it basically is supposed to look like a little cupcake sorry again but if you are watching this on a tiktok account that's not bargain.bethany or bargain bethany diys this video was stolen and it's being played on this account to make money off of my hard work so if you want to support the original person behind this you can follow me at bargain.bethany on tiktok or bargain bethany diys or my youtube channel bargain bethany and please report this video if it's not those tiktok accounts i mentioned because again people are stealing my videos and they're making money off of me i got this pom-pom garland from dollar tree i'm going to cut into the string and then remove the pom-poms and place that on top of my little cupcakes wedging it between the socks and that's how it stays put you don't have to glue it in place or nothing i found these free printables from a blog i'll link down below for you guys i went ahead printed them out cut them and they're perfect for this diy they say you would knock my socks off you rock my socks different things like that and that's how i created this cute little gift that is so easy to do and you can split it amongst multiple people which is really nice moving right along for our next project you're going to need a charger and then a bell cloche from dollar tree the hardest part about this diy is removing the label off of the cloach because oh my gosh you don't want to take heat to it because it can start to bend around the plastic so i had to use dawn power wash let it just soak on the label and then remove it now buy some candies from dollar tree roses teddy bears whatever you want you're going to be putting this on top of the charger inside of the bell cloach now i recommend using balloon glue dots to keep everything in place so you can use the glue dots directly on the charger and on the bell cloach the reason i recommend doing this is because you take all this time making this beautiful piece and once you move it it all flies all over the place and then you have to fix it before you give it to whoever you're giving it to this way if you use the glue dot it doesn't damage the product but it keeps it in place so if you put this inside of your car if you're walking around with it stuff won't move around and you won't have to readjust everything i also use glue dots to get the cloach to stay down in place then i got ribbon and heart picks from dollar tree i did make a small little hole on the top of the cloach you got to be very gentle doing this if you don't think you can do it with being gentle you can always just remove the bottom of the picks off and glue the hearts directly to the top but i made the hole just so i could slide the picks through it now here i am shaking the gift around and you can see the items inside are not moving and that's the goal here you don't want to put this all together like i said go to give it to somebody and everything moves around on you that's how we created this beautiful cloach that is another great gift for valentine's day and it's a great gift to put together to sell because you can make a beautiful piece for a very inexpensive price and then make some money off of it for our next diy i'm going to be using the conversation hearts from dollar tree and i'm going to glue four of them on top of each other we're going to be making a fake cake and this is what i'm using as my base i was trying to use products that are just from dollar tree and dollar tree does not carry a heart-shaped box that is this big so that's why i went with the conversation hearts i found some cardstock at dollar tree that is perfect for this diy what i'm going to do is i'm going to place my heart on top of the cardstock trace it and then cut that out i also trace the sides of the heart and cut that out then i glue these pieces on top of the conversation hearts covering them up i purchased some heart ribbon from dollar tree i'm going to glue that to the top of my heart then I got spackle from Dollar Tree, and you're gonna find this in the hardware section. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your spackle inside of a container you do not eat out of, and then pour some paint inside of there. You want to get a creamy consistency, so you're just gonna keep mixing the paint and the spackle together. You can pour a little bit more in until you get that creamy consistency that you need. You're also gonna need a piping bag and piping tip. Now, I recommend buying your tips somewhere else. Get the metal kind because they're reusable versus the plastic plastic one you get from Dollar Tree that isn't. What you're going to do is you're going to put your spackle inside of that piping bag. And I recommend having three spackles on hand for each cake. You always want a little bit more just in case you make a mistake. Now I'm placing my heart on top of a piece of parchment paper. If you place your cake on top of the parchment paper, once the spackle dries, you'll be able to lift it off of the parchment paper without an issue now it's time to start piping you just treat this as if it were a cake and you're actually icing it because the spackle really just acts like icing honestly so anyways i got some fake cherries i'll link them down below for you guys you can get them for really cheap at hobby lobby but i like the ones from amazon because they're redder 
pushing this in the spackle while it's still wet. Now, I've done so many cakes with just the white looking icing, I decided that I wanted to add some color to this. So if you're gonna add color, again, all you have to do is mix the color paint that you want inside of your spackle, mix it together till you get a creamy consistency, and then go ahead and start piping that out onto your fake cake. I used a mint color as well as a pink color on this particular fake cake. And that's how I made the fake cakes this year for Valentine's Day. Now I have done fake cakes multiple times in the past. I've done ones where they're just all spackle and this is one of those ones. I recommend using cardstock instead or craft foam as your base and then just going in with spackle for the details and not spackle for the entire thing. I think it looks much cleaner doing it the other way versus just spackle. These are so cute and I'm just really happy with how they turned out. Let's make some Valentine's Day candles. Remember to use caution when making candles at home. Dollar Tree carries a big variety of candles so I picked up a few for this project. I preheat my oven to 300 degrees and place the candles on a pizza pan I got from Dollar Tree. I then let the wax melt for 20 minutes. I'll be using white, red, and pink candles for this project. You will wait for the wax to completely melt. Once the wax is melted, remove the wick from the glasses and save for this project or another. I'll be using Dollar Tree glasses for these DIYs. Make sure any glass you buy from Dollar Tree doesn't have a warning label on it about not putting fire near it or heat. Then I use a pencil to wrap the wick around centering them so they don't move as I put in the wax. I got this plastic pitcher at Hobby Lobby that's meant for candles for $2.50. I'm pouring red wax into it. I then pour the wax into the glass. You can pour the wax directly from the candle glass into the drinking glass, but do it slowly or you run the risk of the wax splattering. Then you have to take heat to it to melt away the splatter. I repeated this step with my other glass using pink candle wax. Now I bought this heart silicone mold at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to pour red wax into the hearts. Dollar Tree does carry heart silicone molds at this time of year. Wait for the wax to completely dry and then just pop them out. I'm going to make fake marshmallows to do this. It's real easy. I got white wax melts from Dollar Tree. I cut them into pieces and then I mold them with my fingers. Now it's time to make our whipped wax to look like fake whipped cream. Pour white wax into a heat resistant bowl or mixing glass. You're going to wait for the wax to start cooling down. You will know it's starting to cool down when a film starts to form on the sides and top of the wax. Once that happens, you can start mixing the wax. I'm using a handheld mixer I got from Target. You can always mix the wax by hand. Sorry I keep saying wax, but I don't know what else I'm supposed to call this. Anyways, it might just get tiring mixing it by hand, so it's nice to have something on hand that's automatic. You're going to mix till the wax is a thick whipped cream like consistency. If you've been mixing a while and the consistency isn't changing, wait for the wax to cool down some more and then try again. This is the type of consistency that you see here that you're looking for. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. The light was kind of too bright. Now you're gonna need a piping bag and an icing tip and you're going to pour the wax inside of the bag. If the bag feels really hot, wait for it to cool down a little bit. Not too much, otherwise the wax is going to clog the tip of your icing tip. Now what you're gonna do is you are going to start piping out the wax so that it looks like fake whipped cream. And once you start piping, you don't wanna stop. You need to keep going because it doesn't take a long before the wax starts to get hard within the icing tip so you just got to keep going because if you wait it's going to clog it up and then it's not going to come out right while that wax is still warm i start to place in the hearts that i made as well as the marshmallows that i made I repeated these steps with the pink candle. The only difference was I took a crayon, a white crayon, removed the wrapper, cut it down a little bit, and then placed that inside of the candle. Then you need to trim your wick. You need to trim your wicks between 1 8 of an inch to 3 16 of an inch. You do not want the wick to be too high. It can cause a fire, and on top of that, it's not gonna light right. You are gonna be left with the cutest Valentine's Day candles. You can always add a scent to your wax. I actually hate like pretty much any scent right now, um, so I didn't do that. But you can most definitely add a scent to it to make it smell the way you want it to smell. But oh my gosh, aren't these just so adorable? 
So that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed these Dollar Tree Valentine's Day DIYs. Let me know your favorite down in the comments. Mine's is a sweetheart one. And again, if you are watching this on a TikTok account that's not Bargain.Bethany or Bargain Bethany DIYs, you're watching it on an account that has stolen my video. So please report the video. Please report the account. If you enjoy these DIYs and want to support the original content creator, which is me, you can follow those accounts and not this one, especially if it's Bargain Bethany.YTB. Please report it. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.